Okay, so hello to all our audience of Mel Zone Radio Show. We are in Rennes, Britain at L'Etage. Uh, and we are with uh, one member from uh, Moonspell. Hello, can you introduce to our audience and how are you? Sure, how you doing? Uh, I'm Mike from Moonspell. I play drums. Been in the band since I was 16, so it's uh, 27 years. Yeah. Lots of history. Been through all the, the tough times and the good times <laughs> of, of the band. Yeah, it's like everybody. Everyone's job is difficult. So, um, how are things in your life at the moment? Well, we're on tour. It's uh, 50 shows. Uh, we're, you know, we're not getting any younger. <laughs> But we try to take it day by day and make the show special because there are so many fans coming. Uh, we've had sold out shows. Today sold out. And it's a bit of a surprise. We weren't expecting, because uh, the pre-sales a couple of months ago weren't that special. So all of a sudden, people to come and see us, especially with Rotten Christ, which are they're like brothers to us. We toured with them back in 96 yeah. with Samael, with Zakis. So that was, uh, we always have special memories from that tour. And to be able to, you know, 20-something years later, and, uh, and see people. Just yesterday, we saw a fan from France in Belgium. We hadn't seen her in 13 years, but it felt like it was yesterday, because she went to so many shows in Lille. Yeah. She was always saying, you have go back to Lille, 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 but nobody does shows apparently anymore. Okay. So, Moonspell is uh, now existing for 30 years now, uh, so uh, um, the band is still alive, what, what is the secret or is there is a secret for such a longevity? Well, our secret is that we're coming from Portugal, and there are many few bands in this scene that come from Portugal. So the riches of our country, you know, the, the seaside, the, the food, you know, the commitment we have to our families, it's always kept us very stable. Because at an early age, uh, we could have moved to Germany, because Central Media was from, uh, from Germany, and it would have been a lot easier logistically because of, uh, you know, tours and recording, it would have saved a lot of money. And probably we, could, we would have had a bigger career, but I think we would have lost a bit of our identity. You know, we see that with other people from Portugal that are successful abroad, like uh, Nuno Tencourt from uh, yeah. Extreme. He's, he's from uh, the Azores, but, you know, but he's American. He, yeah. he made everything there, lived there. So for us, it's always been extra special to be able to live in our country, continue to open minds in our country, because it was very close-minded for a long time especially in the metal scene. Still today, we fight it as much as we can, like in media, television, whatever, uh, to get it across because we see it everywhere else in the world. You know, it's a, it's a, it reaches all generations, and we're very well connected, It'd be it if you listen to Rainbow or, <laughs> or, or whatever, or if you listen to, to Slipknot these yeah. days. I think somehow we're, we're all connected. So you are headlining uh, this European tour. You cross many countries uh, with uh, Swiss band Silverdust and Rotting Christ. Uh, uh, did the label choose them, or, or, or do you know them before Rotting Christ? I suppose yes, but Silverdust. No, we didn't know Silverdust. I think it was the agency that uh, put them on the package, and uh, you know, so far they've been very helpful. Uh, I think the crowd has enjoyed them very much. They're very theatrical. They have a, a lot of stuff on stage. But uh, so far, I think it's working pretty well. Uh, today's the eighth day, yeah. so it feels like we've been on tour ready for a month. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's how it is, uh, life on the road. Everything's very intense. Okay. Cool. So in three days now, uh, um, it will be two years in the release of the last album. Uh, uh, do you think about, of course, your next album? Uh, and when can we expect it? <laughs> Well, for this new album, we've, we really wanted to take it easy. That's why we took some more time off from the road, because we did a lot of shows last year and the previous albums. It's been, not, it's been like maybe 200 or more shows per album. So it, it, it's a lot, especially the traveling long yeah. distances, South America, United States, Siberia. <laughs> it gets a bit crazy sometimes. Yeah. So this time we wanted to really uh, be more mature and, and not rush things like we rush certain albums. So now we're focused on this tour, and when we get back home, and when we finally get to relax, uh, we're going to go back to uh, what we've been working on. Uh, so uh, we already have like a, a couple of interesting songs. <laughs> But uh, you know how it is, you go on the road, and that's why we like to go on the road uh, in between you know, when we're working on an album, because it gives us more reality of what the audience is, uh, you know, what they feel, what they're looking for. Because sometimes you can get lost in the studio because you're just making music for yourself. It's yeah. just your own opinions. Yeah, And I think, uh, at least in our history, uh, that usually works well for us because then we, we go back with a different appetite mm -hmm. when we uh, revisit the, the songs. So hopefully 2020, for sure, the, there should be a, a new Moonspell release. Okay. <clears throat> are, you, are you composing on tour or, or only at home? 
yeah, that's why we took uh, time off. It becomes impossible uh, for at least for us to uh, be thinking of uh, songs and composing on, on the road because it's a lot of shows. We have uh, it's 50 shows, and I think we only have two days off. Yeah, of course. So it's very intense. It's very intense. Yeah. And in the past, we tried, and we know so many other friends of ours from other bands that, especially our, our old manager Carson, he would always tell us the bands like In Flames and uh, and whatever they were the work on the road yeah. that never really uh, worked for us we, we're, we, that's why we have our own studio yeah. uh, we get together every day mm -hmm. in a, like a normal job and we've been okay. doing that for over 20 years okay. and it works, it works. good <laughs> <laughs> okay so you've been moving around the metal stage for almost I said 30 years now uh, what changes have you noticed over these years uh, that have taken place both among fans music recipients and organization of concerts Well, everything's a, a, a bit different, uh, especially from our times. But also, we come from Portugal, where you know, to have shows, everything was a bit chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> and in, at least in the perspective in, in Portugal, things have uh, gotten a lot better. Uh, there's still a lot of security towards metal. Like you still see, like a lot of police, and, yeah. and you don't see that so much. Like I, I, I was so, like I was so admired by Hellfest. We mm. played this year, mm. and 80,000 people. I saw uh, maybe four policemen, yeah. and yeah. they were in the corner, and they were yeah. s smiling. Yeah. And, and if I hadn't looked, I wouldn't even know this. So that just shows the, the civilization, and, and, the, and I appreciate so much. And in Portugal, and some Latin countries, or especially South America, of course, uh, you know, there's an intensity of police. It's like people are going to be violent and destroy each other. So, so that's one of the major things I've seen change. Some countries for, more for the better, like I mentioned, Hellfest and others. Like you know, we have more shows now in Portugal, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's a bit you don't feel so much freedom, and that's that's a huge pity. And you start to see that a little bit in in, in certain places. Mm -hmm. So, but the fans are amazing. They're coming out each time more. Uh, I even heard uh, that I think especially now in France. They were telling me that, that since uh, like they feel metal or, or rock is dying out, that they want to uh, have the opportunity mm. to see it. Yeah. Kind of feels like we're becoming extinct. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of, but it, it's uh, sad in, in one way. But it also, is, you know, you have to. You know, if we are one of the last of the generations, we might as well, you know, do what we learned. You know, we toured with amazing bands, Typo Negative and yeah. Tiamat, and yeah. you, you. We had the opportunity to meet, you know, Marlon Manson, Danzig, all these, you know. Yeah. People that also influenced and influenced the scene of today, and uh, to be able to transmit that through our music, and especially live, because that's why we wanted to be in the band in the first place. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what about the music industry? Uh, music industry sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I, uh, uh, I th the only the only uh, uh, bright side of the music industry is the metal side because yeah. uh, you know record companies like ours, uh, you know Napalm Records, mm -hmm. uh, Nuclear Blast, Century Media, they're still keeping it alive. You know, and I know the people that worked behind for so many years of, the, of these uh, record labels. If it wasn't for them, a lot of bands would have died out, especially yeah. American bands. You know, for years they come to Europe. You know, it's where uh, a lot of you know their investment comes from coming to the big festivals have an opportunity to, to have proper conditions we know how the touring is in america mm. it's very rough you don't have the opportunity you know like a, a place like this that we are today yeah. you know, def leppard would play here yeah, <laughs> if it was good, if, good, if, yeah. it, if it was america Alice Cooper come and play there. Exactly, Band, big bands like that. So you don't get that uh, quality like uh, like you do over here in, in Europe. So that, that's something that has changed. But also, again, the fans in America have changed a lot. They're, they're somewhat more European. For, like we did a tour with Epica, yeah. and the, the, the kind of fans that they have over there is like it was surprising to me. It's like everything very, yeah. very nice, uh, orientated, very clean, yeah. and uh, and they go for the the joy of the music, which is you know. Uh, what do you do when you when you rest from playing concerts and and, and composing? <laughs> well, we, we're all parents. We all have children, so there's not much time. A, yeah, These last couple of years, uh, it's a real. It's more than a real it's job, a real especially job. if you stay at home, like yeah. my wife, and staying at home with the baby, me being on tour. It's tough for for everyone, and then she starts to understand that you know, she's only th my daughter's only three and a half, but our vocalist Fernando. His son is only seven. Ricardo has a baby. He's turning two. So just just one of the members, Pedro, that has an older... His kids are already teenagers. So he's in a different level. <laughs> we, we all became dads after around 40 for some reason. Okay. And uh, you, you, you are making a living with the band? Yes. No, that's, well, that's always been... We've always made the living hard or good. It's yeah, always been our living. <laughs> it's always been what we we've been dedicated to. 
uh, for so many years since the you know the first tours we dropped everything in 95 when we toured with more with angel and immortal it was also a tour with 56 shows no, it just things started happening. Yeah. You know, immediately another album, we recorded the religious, then we were on tour with Rotten Christ, and immediately we were supporting Typo Negative on the huge, you know, playing for thousands of people. Yeah. And that was pretty surprising because in 94, we had released an underground mm -hmm. EP. <laughs> yes, yes. So it, it, it feels weird because we were all young mm -hmm. and you always want more and more yeah. and more. But looking back, you know, it, it was pretty amazing. So in December, uh, you were talking about Napalm Records will release a re-edition of Sin Pecado and Second Skin. Uh, 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 in what form will these releases be and uh, why did you choose these materials? Well, the format, I think we're going to have uh, a lot of options, especially an LP. Uh, there should be a CD format. I'm not sure of all the options, but uh, also the, the artwork is very important. It's something that Moonspell always, uh, in, you know, we don't like to release things like half done. We really take attention to all the, the little details. Uh, it's material, you know, it's been over 20 years. It came out in 98, so it's 21 years old. And I think a lot of people were looking for it because of... Uh, in the shops or online, they were saying it was sold out. So uh, Alma Mater Records uh, decided to, to re-release it. And we've been doing this also with like Night Eternal and, and other releases. And also because of Spotify, because yeah, you know, the, 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 the albums come out and then you have to put them back on because of the, the licensing. So we, we've been on top of that, especially Fernando with, uh, with Alma Mater and, uh, and Pedro Videirinho, mm -hmm. which is uh, from Rostilho. Uh, records yeah. he does our uh, also helps us with merch so we have a lot of people that are committed to, to make sure that everything comes out fine and that there's a, a stuff that you can you know reach because sometimes it's difficult like there's a lot of people out there looking for the stuff and, and they can't find it you were talking about Hama Mater you create your own record label yes. Hama Mater yeah yeah it's uh, it's Fernando that's ahead of the of the record label right. but it also represents Moonspell and everything we do, and it helps also, uh, you know, cut the middleman. Like sometimes we've had many problems getting our records in the Portuguese shops. So this way, it's uh, we have a direct contact uh, with the fan. You know, sometimes and that's the future because each time yeah. more, you know, the shops, you know, they charge a lot of money. It's they don't have much selection. If I mean, if it was a real shop, like when we were young, <laughs> you know, people that were actually knew about the music that were there. Yeah. And so I think it's better to, I think the best way is to, you know, get stuff when you come to the shows. I think that's like a huge tradition, you know, since Iron Maiden times, you know, yeah, you yeah. go to a show, you want, you want a shirt, you want, you want something. <laughs> so you are crossing, like I said at the beginning, all over Europe for, for this tour. Uh, what are your plans after this tour? Going at home, start composing, continue composing? Well, after this tour, of course, we want to rest, first of all. Yeah, <laughs> it's good, and it's only going to be, uh, it'll be over by 16th of December, so that will be around Christmas, so we're going to try and enjoy the time that we have with our family. But of course, come January, you know, it's like everybody in any business, uh, you know, start to reorganize ourselves and you know, go back to, to, the, to the songs and start to uh, book a date yeah. to record the album. And hopefully we'll... Uh, and I'll do it with one of uh, our favorite producers. So. But uh, you'll find out soon. <laughs> okay. So we're going to wait a little bit. Be patient. Be patient. So to conclude, Mike, did you have something to add and some words uh, for, for the French audience? Because we are today in Rennes, France, Britain. Well, just uh, thanks for all the years of support. It's been... Uh, you know, over 20 years. The first time we played there, like I said, was in 95. And, and even then, you know, the reaction that we got from the, the French audience w w was pretty incredible, the support that we got. And we've seen over the years, you know, the, the massive shows, the, you know, the festivals, Hellfest, and how it grew. Because we're from the times where, you know, we played Dynamo in Holland. That was the only big festival that existed. And that died out. I think they're coming back recently. But the way that the French showed how it was possible, because you would only see this in Germany back in the 90s, and the way it grew and to be able to be part of it, to see it happen, and to be here now, today, you know, with all, all, all this quality and appreciation. So we're the ones that are definitely thankful, because you know, I think you, you contributed a lot, as you can see by Gaudita yeah. and the whole you know, French, and there are many more French bands coming after, and the quality is superior. And not just that, you know, we come from Portugal, so we're very uh, attracted to your movies, the comedy, yeah, the music. You, know, you, you have a, a level that the Portuguese will never reach, I don't yeah, think. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be very difficult. Yeah. I wish they could learn more. There was, you know, in the yeah. past centuries, er, Portugal's 
completely dominated by French influence. So I think they, especially for the metal scene, you know, fans have an opportunity to come here. They should just make a, a vacation out of it and see how things are done. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so thank you very much. This was Mike from Moonspell, and uh, they play at uh, the Etage Rennes today. And uh, you can check, of course, the the social media's networks, Facebook, etc., etc. Support the band, go to the shows, buy albums. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, wish you a lot of good things for the band, for you, your family, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Yeah. En français. Et comment on dit merci en portugais? Uh, obrigado. Obrigado? Obrigado. Obrigado. Like in Brazil. Yeah. A little S bit now. Same language. Same language. <laughs> yeah. Obrigado. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you very much.